Memoirs of a Seasoned Traveler Away from the snow-capped Alaskan mountain ranges, as we move west towards the coast, we can find fleets o' bar-tailed godwits. Long-legged and long-billed but slighter than other godwits of the wider family, they are the heroes of this tale. Humans have been fascinated by these creatures for a long time. Their stamina as they cross oceans, twice every year for survival, is inspiring. They are one of the most scrutinized beings of the animal world. So much that their journey is tracked, the miles they covered are celebrated. But godwits remain humble. A lone godwit separates from the flock. He lacks the excitement of the first flyers, fresh out of their nests, making the arduous journey for the first time. Nor does he have the indifference of a traveler, who has undertaken the crossing too many times. Hey there. I am Kyle. I am a godwit. Let me correct the human error. While it is true that as years pass, the journey becomes tedious and old, but a part of me will bear the zeal of a first-time flyer. But this is a great day for me. My kids are making the journey for the first time, said the bird beaming. His kids shifted their feet shyly, they are new to this world, and are expected to make a perilous journey of 8,000 miles. The proud daddy decided that he should say a few words his babies, my darlings, the first time is an adventure, every subsequent time is a journey. My adventures are done, but I am glad to assist you in yours. So how is the feeling today? Miley, his boldest kid, chose to answer. Dad, we know you expect us to be thrilled, like you were when you flew the first time, but we are mostly frightened. Sorry, we are not brave like you. Miley was drawing circles with her feet, while the rest of the kids hung their heads down. Their father's heart melted at such goodness. Kyle couldn't help but wonder the source of their goodness. It was not him and certainly not their mother. Now, now. Don't you worry. I hope you weren't scared enough to not to fill up on your crustaceans. What do I always say? Fat is the best, yelled the young chicks. Winter is fast approaching, the air is getting chillier as days pass, and the nights are cut short. They will be off soon. As Kyle stared into the oceans, he remembered his first time. He was born in Alaska, and some weeks after that he was expected to make the perilous flight to New Zealand. He thought it was ridiculous and felt it was unkind of his flock to push him into doing so. He had half a mind to refuse to fly, but he knew his flock would leave him behind. This journey was ingrained in them, no godwit can endure the Alaskan winters, not when food is scarce. So, they travel miles to New Zealand in the fall only to make the journey back in spring. Kyle had flown for four days, almost halfway, when he couldn't anymore. With the encouragement of the flock he flew for another day. But soon he was weary and wished for land under his feet. He had fell behind. There were no stopovers to refresh from Alaska to New Zealand, only oceans to traverse. This was unlike the route back to Alaska, where they stop in the Yellow Sea for rejuvenation, in order to reach Alaska in good condition to breed. But in winter they are in a hurry and cannot afford to stop. Frustrated and left behind, Kyle flapped his wings one at a time. Inside him, he found great determination and finally he saw land. His flock welcomed him and food was in plenty. He felt complete. He understood the meaning of being a godwit. The strength in their hollow bones, the grit in them. Godwits go through incredible pain for existence. Hence, they take immense pride in being a godwit. That pride stopped him from recounting the true details of his first journey to his kids. He has never heard a godwit complain or shrink away from the course charted for them. Kyle, Lexi wants to see you. She is at the cliff. Come on, Evan was the biggest bird in their flock, so, you terrified to let your babies go? He was accompanying Kyle to the cliff. No, I am proud. They are ready as they could be, said Kyle stiffly not wanting to extend this conversation for another minute. Of course, Evan was not convinced, I will leave the two of you at it. He made a salute at Lexi before flying off. Lexi was leading the flock for the first time. She was still young but brilliant, so there was no doubt that she will be leading once Gregson chose to retire. But she wasn't expected to take charge for some years. Unfortunately, Gregson perished in their last flight, 
and Lexi had to take up the reins. Kyle has been a supportive friend and advisor to the new captain. She smiled at her friend, we fly in an hour. Some of the elders remain skeptical about the new course. Their doubt is weighing me down. She gazed at Kyle with her tired eyes, seeking affirmation. We will follow you. You were chosen by Gregson. He was so single-mindedly determined, determined for our survival. And he chose you. Kyle said assuredly. Why did you not want to lead us? When she got no reply, she continued, you are so wonderful. Greg would have never picked me if he knew you were an option. I know you would do anything for this flock, and it gives me strength to have birds like you with me. Lexi could hardly contain the quiver in her voice. Her friend stood smiling probably embarrassed by their captain's candor. At the beaches, people have camped to see the godwits fly off. The godwits don't notice the people anymore. They are usually present to send them off and to welcome back the tired birds. In spring, most of the godwits would be pleased if the humans did not tag or place trackers on them, otherwise, they don't mind the scrutiny. Kyle noticed Lexi's look of disapproval. You object to these charades. Shouldn't you be used to this by now? I don't understand them. The fuss is beyond me. They caught you the other day. Didn't they? Kyle took a long breath before replying. Yes. I am aiding their understanding of us. I am pleased to do that. We inspire them. You find that unlikely. I am quoting my friend David here. He is supposed to know a thing or two about our kind. The British nature guy, Lexi was snorting now, you do know that his countrymen thought we were delicious till some time ago. Kyle's mind was going overdrive. They were definitely flirting. He has to agree they made sense, but he had too much in his mind to do something about it now. He was an integral member of their flock. He has taken the responsibility to shape the flock to move forward. This time the flock is changing their course after a long time, heading his advice. For him, the most adventurous journey he had taken was three years ago. On this eventful journey, he was thrown off charts by unforeseen gales. He was surprised to discover an uninhabited landmass with resources. With great pleasure, he realized that this little piece of land could be their stopover. It would lessen the number of lives lost every time they cross continents. The very traditional godwits were opposed to this new route. With the few friends he could convince, he had rallied for a change in course, but without avail. He was disappointed in his congregation. In their stubbornness to stick to the system, they were putting themselves at risk. Godwits are not flexible, they have a time-tested course that worked so they stuck to it. But one can't refuse change when the world around was evolving for better or worse. It was a difficult time to be a godwit, or any bird, the climate was changing, habitats were lost. They were dying slowly but definitely dying. After almost three years of relentless pushing of the idea on the higher-ups, Kyle had finally given up. Last spring, Gregson approached him during flight. Kyle had flown ahead of the group, he was too frustrated with his comrades. Gregson was a traditionalist, but he knew Kyle was a valuable, well-liked member. He could not have a disgruntled bird in his flock. Kyle. I am sorry we disappointed you. You cannot spring a revolution on them. You will end up ostracized from the group. No one wants that, Gregson's voice had a hint of admiration, which almost made Kyle regret his next action. Kyle swooped sideways to disturb Gregson's flight. Before Gregson could regain his balance, Kyle was at it again. This time attacking his captain's eyes. They were losing height and was now close to the water. The younger bird was too strong for the veteran, blind and in shock, he was shoved to the water. The waters were infested with unfriendly fish, who made a feast out of the great godwit's frail, tired body. Kyle felt calm. He had devised three plans to snuff Gregson, but always decided against it. He knew Gregson would come around. Nonetheless, as Gregson yammered about waiting a little more, Kyle had decided he was done waiting. Lexi would be easier to convince. With Gregson's sudden demise, she would need assistance and he planned to offer just that. 
His plan was hastily made but his fortune shined through. At the shore, he joined the rest of the flock in waiting for the captain's return, championed the search parties, and finally mourned for the resilient soul. After a few weeks, Kyle spoke to the flock, I understand your uneasiness at our captain's decision to alter course. I was a supporter of this initiative for a long time now. But Gregson said the time was not right yet. Today Gregson's protege says it's time, and I will follow her with no doubt and wholeheartedly. Join me, folks. Let us parade behind our leader for we are proud godwits, and we will survive. Today will be worth all the indifference and contempt he had faced. He had secured the future of his species by adding a little imagination. The humans will be knocked off their feet when they find their muse on an altered course, and he was responsible for this historic event.